Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on the Arrhenius equation. So in this video we're going to look at this quite expanded bit of uh, chemistry. They've really added a lot of this to the new specifications in particular. Um, so this video is basically going to look at the calculation, what the equation is, and we're also going to go through, like I say, an example as well, and also talk about the effects of uh, certain parts of the equation, um, because you need to be able to kind of talk about this in particular if your exam has multi-choice, where they could throw this types of questions in as well. So, um, basically, what is Arrhenius' equation? Arrhenius was a, um, a chemist, a physicist, and he, um, he won the Nobel Prize. Um, I believe he was Swedish. Um, and he basically came up with an equation that showed a relationship between K, which is the rate constant, which you probably would have seen in your rate expressions. So rate equals K, and then concentration of your reactants, etc. Um, and how this uh, relates with T, which is temperature, and EA, which is activation energy. And so this whole equation is obviously centered around this. Um, and I'm basically just going to show you the equation first and we're going to go through all the little bits as well and then go through these bits later on. Okay, so we'll start with this one here. This is the equation for that Arrhenius came up with. And he basically said that the rate constant, which is K, so let's uh, write that down, let's write blue. So this is your rate constant. Uh, and the rate constant is uh, basically uh, represented by AE and then minus EA over RT. And A is something called the Arrhenius constant. And don't worry too much about that because you'll be given that in the exam. So Arrhenius constant. Uh, and this is an exponential relationship, a bit of a posh word. Uh, basically, this is what this E bit means. And if you uh, look in your calculator, um, you might be able to see it on there, you can see there is that you'll see there's like a little symbol that says E on the top. Uh, and so that is the exponential button. And under that is LN, which we will come on to in a minute. So that's the button you're gonna be using quite a lot in your calculator. Okay, so uh, basically this is exponential. EE, we said was activation energy, which you will have come across already. Activation energy. Okay, R is your uh, gas constant. Again, if you've done um, in AS, so in your first year, you would have done ideal gas uh, equation. So R is just a gas constant. Again, you'll get that one uh, given to you. So this is a gas constant. And T, I'm running out of room here, is temperature. Right, a few things. Um, temperature must be in Kelvin, that's very important. Uh, activation energy is in joules. Um, you can convert to kilojoules if you want, um, but generally it's written in joules. Um, and R is 8.31 because that's the gas constant. A can change. Um, again, you'll be given that in the exam, it depends on what you're working out. Uh, and obviously, K is just your rate constant as well. Okay. Now, you might look at that and think, well, that looks quite complicated. And we're going to try and simplify it just a little bit. And the thing which is really, really kind of ugly in this bit is the E bit, the exponential. And so what we can do is we can try and get rid of that. Now, in maths, if you want to get rid of one function, you have to do it to both sides of the equation. So in other words, the opposite of your exponential is what we call a natural log. We call it ln. And again, I'll pick up the calculator. And you can see you've got a button that says ln on there. You've got one that also says um, log that's next to it, and ln is right next door to it. There you go, you can see it there. So that's natural log. So you're going to use that button uh, in your calculations quite a bit. And you can see it's the opposite of exponential, which is the little one just at the top there. So that's the button you're going to be using. It's different from log. It is a completely different button. So it's called a natural log. So if we take the natural log of both sides, uh, we get lnk, you can see I've just put ln in front of here, and then we put lna minus ea over rt. Then you can see what we've done is we've lost the e bit from there. Okay, so we're just going to add that on there. We're going to say you take natural logs of both sides. All right, okay, so. This will still get you the, the same answer. It's just a lot easier to rearrange uh, when you have to work out activation energy, as you can see down there. Um, okay, in terms of um, 
the effects of different things. Um, you need to be able to explain the effects of um, temperature and activation energy on K, which is your rate constant. And you need to be able to explain it as well using the correct terminology. So, for example, if we increase the activation energy, remember this is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. Okay, um, remember particles need to collide obviously for a reaction to occur and they must have enough energy to do that. Um, if we increase the activation energy, then our rate is going to drop, mainly because we have less particles with sufficient energy for a successful collision to occur. Um, and for that reason, uh, our value of K decreases. So, and you can try it, you can put the numbers into your equation and just change EA, uh, keep everything else the same, and you'll see the effect it has on K, but it will drop, it will decrease. If we take a reaction and we heat it up, so we increase the temperature, then the effect on K would also increase. Again, the reason why is because the particles have more energy, so therefore they have a, a higher chance of successful collisions because they have more kinetic energy, providing, of course, they're in the correct orientation. Uh, but effectively, again, you can put it into your equation and you can change the temperature and keep everything else the same, and you'll see if you increase the temperature, your rate constant should increase. You are expected to be able to comment on these and you will need to be able to say why using the uh, reasoning that I've just given there. So it's about successful collisions, etc. So it's not too bad, okay. Finally, let's just look at the equation here because obviously you need to be able to calculate these things. It's not too bad, providing you use the simplified version, it's probably easier to use, I think. Okay, so here's an example. We've got calculate the activation energy of a reaction at 330 Kelvin and a rate constant of uh, 1.30 times by 10 to the minus four, S to the minus one. This is just like an example we're using. Uh, we're assuming that the Arrhenius constant is 4.55 times by 10 to the 13, and the gas constant is 8.31. Okay, dead easy. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start writing out our equation first. So uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do it in blue. So I'm gonna put our equation here. So I'm gonna put ln k equals ln a, okay, minus ea over rt. Okay, so we need EA, so we're going to rearrange it. I'm just going to rearrange going like across here. So what we'll do is I'm going to bring this whole bit here, this EART, shift it across to that side, and then move the LNK over here, so at least I have EA on one side of the equation. So that's going to leave us with, because that's minus EA over RT, that's just going to be positive EA over RT. And again, that's another reason why I've decided to drag it across that side, because I get a positive value, which is what we're looking for. Uh, okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to drag the LNK over to this side. So that's going to be LNA minus LNK. So you see, this is positive LNK, we shift it across, it becomes minus, okay. Still, we don't have EA on its own, so we need to rearrange a little bit further, and we need to get EA on its own. You can see this is divide by RT, so what we do to cancel that, we do multiply by RT on the left, and we multiply by RT on the right, and that basically cancels the RT bit out on that side. So activation energy equals LNA uh, minus LNK times by RT. Okay, there we are, right, okay. So what we've got here, we've now got activation energy on its own. And that's all the hard work, really. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. You just gotta make sure you put the right numbers in there and you break it down in your calculator using brackets. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. So, let's drag this here and we're gonna put EA. Okay, so, okay, EA, so EA equals, which, and this equals the LNA. So we're just gonna put in here LN, which is the natural log. A, we said was 4.55 times by 10 to the 13, okay? And then we're going to subtract that away from the, uh, oop, there you go, natural log of, and this is gonna be K. So K is, doo -doo -doo, rate constant 1.30. So it's 1.30 times by 10 to the minus four. There you go. Make sure you work this bit out first, because the calculator may get a little bit confused if it doesn't, so work this bit out first. This is the LNA minus LNK, uh, and then we're gonna multiply 
that answer, and again put this in brackets just to make sure you get the right number, R, which is 8.31, okay? And that's going to be multiplied by the temperature, which is 330 Kelvin. There you go. And then if we put all of that into our calculator, making sure we're using that natural log button that I showed you before, um, we should get an answer in joules. It'll be quite a large number because it's obviously in joules. So it's 110779 you should get. 0.9. Uh, and that one will be in joules per mole, um, but you can, let's say if we want to put it into um, three significant figures and put it into kilojoules instead, then effectively what you'd get is one, one, one kilojoules per mole. And it's pretty much as simple as that. I mean, the most difficult bit for this is, is trying to rearrange it, making sure you're getting all the right things in the right places. But once you've actually done that, um, it shouldn't actually be too bad. Um, and just make sure that you're obviously putting your right numbers in and you make sure you're bracketing it in the right place. Do it in separate bits and then put it in rather than chuck it all into the calculator because it'll come out with a, with a different number. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, there is another video as well on the Arrhenius equation where you're using graphs because um, they could get you to plot some data and then work out um, activation energy, for example, from a graph. Um, so um, if you want to see that video, if you just click on the link below, uh, you can see that video there. But um, other than that, that's it. Bye-bye.